uh, part two of the Super Metroid commentary. Now hey, look, got... we're going down a shaft and you went invisible. I'm going to go to the bathroom really quick. Don't take your damn laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I just did. <laughs> Hey, it's look, a, it's another shaft. No, I'm gonna hold it. <laughs> the whole part. game is just fucking shafts. <laughs> <laughs> Super Metroid, when you think of this game, you think of shafts. <laughs> not the nice kind. Uh, like yeah. We got a... Okay, so now we got a criteria, and now we're in a... a Brinstar now. Just, uh... Well, it's like Super Metroid... Is... 69 energy! Sorry, I had to point that out. Okay, thanks for pointing out an obvious thing, but okay. <laughs> but, um, Planet Zebus, the planet that we're on right now, is... Uh, we're, Samus right now is uh, retreading it again, because this is the first planet you're actually on in the very first Metroid game. So, why are we back on here? Because Be fucking the cause... pterodactyl from hell decided to steal a Metroid? Yeah, Ridley uh, decided to take the uh, last the last Metroid because uh, I knew it. Ridley did become an alien. <laughs> it all makes sense. You're gonna the, die. Xeno the alien movies make sense now. <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny that you mentioned that though, Eric, because the Metroid games are actually heavily inspired by the Alien series. Really? Yeah, they are. So what, are the Metroids like parasitic life forms that will infect other people to have their babies? Well, no, just the Metroids just suck the energy out of people and everything like that. But um, more of the fact is that, you know, you're a woman, you know, going against, you know, impossible odds and everything like that. You know, what Sigourney Weaver does in the Alien series and whatnot, you know, it just... It's, it's really similar, because the first Metroid game is kind of almost like the first Alien movie and everything like that, where pretty much there's, like, there are more than one Metroid in there, but, you know, it's more the fact that she is stuck on the planet, you know, with, uh, with, the, al with the Metroids and whatnot, and, you know, she has to take down the Mother Brain and everything like that, and then the sequel, uh, Metroid 2 Return of Samus, she actually goes to, you know, the home planet of the of the uh, Metroids and everything like that, and you know, in Aliens, you know, Ridley does the same thing. I'm just gonna point out that we need some get damn Xenomorphs in here. <laughs> I already think I've seen enough Xenomorphs when I saw that uh, Sonic Zombie Origins thing. <laughs> what are you doing now? Uh, just grinding for health. Oh. You know, those, uh, certain, uh, I don't know, they look like pipes from Super Mario to me. <laughs> That's what I was thinking earlier. But, um, you know, they have an infinite amount of, uh, responding enemies, so if you ever need some more health or anything like that, you can just grind right there for more health, or, hell, they even drop, you know, missiles and super missiles once you unlock them. And now, for our second boss, I should say, or it could be count as a mini boss, uh, Spore Spawn. Um, I'm guessing there's an eye in there, isn't there? I don't know if it's an eye or three eyes. I don't care what it is, but this thing reminds me of the the freaking plant from that uh, that musical, a little uh, shop of horrors. I don't even know what the hell that is. Eh, well, you know what? Honestly, I'm not surprised. It's way ahead of our time. As in, it's meant for the newer generations, or is it... It's more the fact that, you know, the mu that musical itself, honestly, when it comes to any newer generations knowing something about it, honest to God, you probably won't know that many new, uh, that many of, you know, the new generations of, you know, people knowing about it. Uh, that didn't even answer my question. In fact, I think I just got more confused. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Fuck it. I give up. But anywho, the Spore Spawn is pretty easy. As long as you're in your Morph Ball here in the corner, you he can never hit you whatsoever unless you get up. But that's it, though. And those Spores that he always drops, they'll they'll never come and hit you when you're in this corner. But it's always nice to shoot the, get up and shoot them every once in a while because they will drop you know missiles and whatnot. And I think missiles are the only thing that could damage him. Because I don't think regular uh, 
power shots is gonna do anything. Unless you had the uh, the charge beam, but you don't at this point. You don't get the charge beam until <laughs> until about uh, Norfair. Uh, yeah. And that's it. It's a little. Oh, jeez. <laughs> what, 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 what did you, what you, you do? do? You broke it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I broke. I broke it. The game. Yeah, I kind of felt. Kind of was weird looking at that screen because I actually. <laughs> I actually cropped this. Uh, crop the game screen a bit so it actually looks you know somewhat presentable because i would have had like probably black bars on this move uh this video at the top and bottom if i didn't crop it so so you know when i have it cropped and looking at something that's at you know 16 9 ratio it just looks fucking odd because it's so zoomed in <sighs> so after defeating spore spawn i got myself the super missiles which, if super you guys, missile. super missile. <laughs> if you guys, super man. If you guys have been noticing the doors here and everything like that, each one of them has a certain, you know, color to them. Pretty much represents that you have to use a certain item in order for you to open that door. Blue means that you can open it with anything. Green means you need a super missile. Pink means that you need five regular missiles or one super missile if you want to. And the yellow ones. All these beautiful yellow. flowers. Do any of them get you high? <laughs> what, you want weed in this game? At this point, I wouldn't... I'm surprised there isn't weed. Well, if you're gonna make it a game based on the Alien movies, there's gotta be weed in there to calm the person down, because there's no way they're gonna be going up against all this shit and not be fucked up. <laughs> Twelve times a charm. I don't know, maybe she has some sort of smoky defibrillator inside her shoulder pads. Seriously, once we get the various suit... Damn, those shoulder pads are huge! Wondering what other stuff she can fit in there. You know, snacks, beverages. Um, maybe that's the, how they explain how she has the ball form. Maybe it has something to do with the shoulder pads, but I'm not too sure. And I just passed the noob bridge. The noob bridge? Because... One thing that Super Metroid introduces is a running button, and not a lot of whole people knew about the running button at first. And you have to run when it comes to that bridge, because if you walk, you're just going to fall and then you have to start all over again. Uh -huh. You know what, I'm thankful for a run button, because it really does help out. Run button! But now we're at the, uh, we're at deeper of uh, Brinstar. Uh, Brinstar's not the biggest place. We'll be getting to other places. Uh, I think maybe Materia, uh, Materia will be the biggest area, and that's the underwater place. God, I fucking Wait, hate that area. when did the Final Fantasy's magic powers become a uh, level in this game? Oh, I'm sorry, not Materia, Meridia. Sorry, I fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> this is not Final Fantasy VII, by the way, which I am really getting pissed off at. What, because you can't record it? Or the fact that you're just trying to destroy all the All damn... the above? Alright, <laughs> that answers my question. <laughs> yeah, it is a pain in the ass when you're going pointless after room. the damn weapons. Yeah, it's, it's pointless, but I'll still go back to show you guys something for it. <laughs> but I need a certain power-up in order for me to do that. What I pretty much just demonstrated there is that if you use your bombs on certain sections of the walls, they'll reveal icons, and that icon can represent an item that you have to use to uh, break it. Right there was the super missiles, so I would have to use the super missiles in order for me to uh, super missile. break the uh, break a certain thing there. But we will go back to that area soon. I'm just coming down here to Norfair to get a quick little something. <laughs> Not this, but this is helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, that doesn't look too helpful. Hey. You're going down a shaft. Yeah, well, that's just the basic design of all 2D Metroid games. I mean, 3D Metroid games of the Prime series and other M still kind of have certain shafts and everything like that, but, you know, 
it's more the fact that it's more uh, flat terrain in 3D than it is in 2D. But I got myself the high jump boots to allow me to jump higher. Aha! <sighs> now, we just need to get Chris to work the shaft of every single game. The reason why I'm coming back down is I have to kill this creature. If I don't kill it, then the door leading to the rest of uh, North Fair, or the door I came from when I first got into this room, won't open. Really? Yeah. Some doors are like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much if it's gray, it's either, you know, you're trapped in a room, and that means that it's either A, a boss battle, or B, you have to destroy all the enemies in the area, allowing you to, you know, proceed on forward. But I got what I need out of Norfair. It's like a blue hot dog. What, the damn elevator shaft? Yeah. Ah, uh, those, those weird uh, observations that we missed from you, Chris. <laughs> we yeah. need them. Yeah. <laughs> so, you pretty much need the high jump boots in order for you to reach this part of uh, Brinstar here. But the thing is, is though, I could have easily used the wall jump in order to get up here. But, yeah, I didn't feel like doing it at the time. Fuck the wall jump. I love the wall jump in here. This wall jump is way better than the wall jump in Mega Man even, X. Even, even, calm down. <laughs> no, I even love... Even don't, don't, don't have a bitch fit. <laughs> I love the wall jump in here. It is fantastic. I'll bitch fit as much as I want, damn it. Yeah, then you're probably fat to this game. <laughs> you don't know that. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we do. Damn. You're probably happening right now. My secret is revealed. <laughs> no, it's it's not like I that I, my, door I has have, an eye. No, no, yeah, that thing has an eye. When you see these doors have eyes, that pretty much means you're going to a main boss. And my observations. The doors are... have eyes. That sounds like a good movie. <laughs> the sequel to the, the hills have eyes. The sequel to the hills have eyes. <laughs> no, they have. They already had a sequel to the hills have eyes. That's hills have eyes too. Damn. Okay. That spin-off. The Hills Have Eyes 3, The Doors Have Eyes. <laughs> I was going to say spin-off, but okay. <laughs> King K. Rool! Yeah, I know, he cut it. Jesus, what the fuck is that thing? Is that Ridley? Jesus, he let himself go! <laughs> oh, it's Java the Hutt. <laughs> <laughs> Ridley, Java. They had a baby, and they got, they got this. What the hell? But no, this is crazy. What the hell is this? Did you Ridley name and it? Java the Hutt had a baby. Did you name it? <laughs> Did you name it? <laughs> All right. Well, I oh, hope you to it because it, it's going the fuck overboard. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this is Kraid. This is one of the staple bosses of the Metroid universe. He's not Ridley. So he just has. He just appears a lot. Yeah, he really does. It, pretty much, Mother Brain, Kraid, and Ridley are the three monsters that appear a lot in the Metroid series. They're they're pretty much staple bosses. Okay, so then Ooh. why the fuck do we have to keep dealing with them? Well, first of all, we dealt with them on Planet Zebus in the first Metroid game, and we're Did back. Should they be dead? Yeah, that's why I don't understand, because when you go... It was weird, because when I played Metroid 1 as a kid, you know, when you destroyed Ridley, he blows up into little 8-bit pieces. And when you come Are back... They just clones or something? I have no idea, because... You know, Metroid's one of those games where the chronological uh, storyline is all over the place. Yeah. You know, kind of like with Metal Gear Solid. Ah. Uh. Like, um... Uh, you'll have Metroid, which is the very first game and everything like that, but then Metroid Prime 1 is the next one after that, then 2, then 3, and then Metroid 2, and then Super Metroid, and then Other M. It's, just, it's all over the place. That was so a mini your reason. average uh, Japanese video game. They d can't count in the proper order. Yeah, pretty much. I don't know if... It's Unless R3 is their one, and R2 twos are their twos and their ones are our threes this is so fucking confusing <laughs> well all of the trying to chronologically put games together especially don't, when they have you don't you don't try attached. you don't try you just play <laughs> or in ethan's case you fuck the game <laughs> <laughs> that's why this game will never work on my super nintendo again <laughs> it's like blowing in the cartridge <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure he did everything 
<laughs> and yet, we the are blowing still... was not enough. He took it to the next level. <laughs> I'm telling you, I put as much rubbing alcohol on that Q-tip I can, and it still doesn't work. <laughs> really? That's weird. <laughs> Oh, I think still is my my original copy of this game still is fine. <laughs> I just <laughs> I can't take this seriously anymore. <laughs> That's a good way to end the video. <laughs>